I hate cooking, but I like <laughs> eating. Ah, <laughs>、uh, yeah. So you know, cooking for me has always been this really fantastic way to connect to the culture of any language I'm learning. So everywhere we go, I try a new one, and this one I discovered when we were in York, which is this really beautiful town in the north of England. So let us take you on a culinary adventure around the world. We're going to explore six different recipes from five different countries, from UK sweet treats. British food also gets a bad rap, right? But their desserts are really good, and I used to be quite the sweet tooth. To the hearty flavors of Ukraine. I brought you a recipe which is very easy one. It's very traditional in our family and in Ukraine as well. To the vibrant tastes of Brazil. People from my state are kind of proud about. Our food, so、mm -hmm. we make everything like a world heritage something call right now. <laughs> But they say they say that. And finally, we have a gift for you. It's a PDF with all six of the recipes that we're going to talk about today. So if any of them stood out to you, you can try cooking them at home. I would usually say crepes. Careful, devour there. You don't want to say. You don't want to say. <laughs> no.、We'll、make you some for breakfast. <laughs> Oh yeah, boys and girls, citizens of the world. This is Ethan from Real Life English, where every single week it is our mission to take you beyond the classroom to speak English confidently and naturally, to connect to the world, and to use your English as the doorway to your greatest life. Today's topic is near and dear to my heart. Mate reminded us that hopefully we have eaten before this episode, because otherwise we might be drooling all over the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Could you define the word drooling? Drooling. It's when you're salivating, like liquid comes out of your mouth or gathers in your mouth because something is provoking you, your sensations. Yeah, you can say my mouth's watering, right? Oh yeah. Or you can、oh, call、yeah. something a mouth-watering dish as an adjective.、Mm -hmm. That's a really nice. It's more、expression. literal.、Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if something、yeah. really looks appetizing, you can say that that looks really mouth-watering. And I love this whole concept of combining cooking and language learning because for me, it's I've had some experience with this. My example was with French. I got really obsessed with French cooking for a while, so I would have my whole ritual with my French learning, cooking in French. Maybe get a nice bottle of French wine to enjoy while cooking the dish and while eating it. And I would create this environment by putting on some French music. I had my playlist that I would listen、mm. to while cooking, so I, I feel、immersion. like I was thrown. Yeah. Exactly, thrown right into <laughs> a kitchen in Paris,、mm, nice. and I think a lot of English learners listen to a lot of music in English already. But maybe if you're learning English, you could try some American dish or some British dish. We'll give you maybe at least an example or two today, and you could have that one specific type of music you listen to while cooking. Like for me, what would come to mind in cooking American food? Might be some fifties, sixties jazz, Ella Fitzgerald. I might not only be music. For example, if you follow some、uh, chef, American or British chef, it can be like the actual video of a recipe, and you will、mm. be following. So I, I used to do it with Jamie Oliver's videos. What a great way to live your English. And the videos were really nice. <laughs> I think I myself like got into the world of cooking because I had to like when I was eighteen moved out of my parents' house. And I just had to learn everything on my own. So I don't know if I if I know how to make so many like、uh, fancy dishes, but、mm -hmm. or fancy recipes. But I know the practical ones, and I, I think I know how to、yeah. make them good. Do you actually remember the first dish you cooked on your own? I mean,、uh, if you ignore stuff like eggs, right? Which are <laughs> it's not a real dish, but、uh, <laughs> well, like, omelet like depends. Yeah,、uh, yeah, omelet. Yeah. It was interesting. You said omelet, and I would say. In my accent, at least, I would say omelet. So cutting out one of the e's in there. Omelet. Yeah.、Mm -hmm. Just like Hamlet,、mm -hmm. like the the play. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Hamlet's omelets. Gotcha. It is interesting though. It's good that you learn to cook easy, but not everyone takes that independence from home. Like in the states, most of us get kicked out of the house. Not really. We go to university when we're eighteen, and a lot of people I knew would not take that as a opportunity to learn how to cook. They would just rely on ramen noodle. Which you know is like that you just throw it in boiling water and then throw super in the popular、seasoning. among students, right? Yeah, it, and <laughs> it's super、too. cheap. Or mac and cheese is a very a very popular go to snack or meal for Americans. Mac and cheese is it like macaroni with cheese, right? Yeah, 
Okay. That's that's right. That's like super American that we shorten the macaroni and it's mm -hmm. and shorten the and so it's mac and mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice, okay. nice catch. But my mom, I think what she did was really brilliant. When we were teenagers, she had me and my brother once a week. Each of us had to choose a dish, a recipe that we wanted to make, and give it to her. And she would, you know, when she went to the store, she would get all the ingredients and everything. And then we had to prepare a meal. Each of us would have oh, prepare, so prepare cool. one meal a week. So when I got to university, I already had you know some experience under my belt. Not just experience, right? Because like I was going to ask you, why is it that you love cooking so much? Yeah, <laughs> I suppose that instilled in me to uh, more of a love for cooking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love um, having Mira by my side when cooking and actually like asking her to join. So she's my sous chef <laughs> very often. Do you have one of those stepping stools? Yeah, when, when she was younger, when she was like really little, um, she used to use that. Now she's but tall right enough. Right now she's like, yeah, she's tall stove. enough. Mm -hmm. Actually, she's like grown up enough uh, and she already tried to make pancakes on her own. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Nice. So you're because I know you mentioned when we were preparing this episode that you don't like cooking. You just do it for <laughs> yeah. for sustenance, for not survival, to, right? <laughs> yeah, for survival, not to starve, not to make my family starve. Yeah. Have so to soon you'll have. Uh, hopefully, she'll take more to cooking than you do, and you'll have you know your personal chef there. <laughs> yeah, she'll take over the kitchen. Personal chef. <laughs> Train like chef. Your, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your evil I plan. Hope so. Not that evil, evil plan, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm practical. Practical. So we'll be looking at a few different recipes. Each of us have brought different recipes. And I loved seeing your guys' choices because, well, I've lived in Brazil, so I recognized at least one of the ones that Izzy brought today. But Ksenia, one of yours reminded me of other things that I've mm -hmm. had, but I've never had the Ukrainian version. Okay. Happy to share that with you. I'm curious, actually, because Ethan, I saw yours and I thought it was it was fancy compared to the stuff I, I usually make. It's not that fancy. It's elaborate, I would say. Elaborate, right? Like mm -hmm. I maybe it takes some time to prepare it. So I thought I would just start with the background here. This dish is actually it's not from the United States. I didn't bring any American dishes. Something people should know about the United States is most good food isn't American. And it's one of the great things about the United States is we just have it's this melting pot of different cultures. And so there's all this different cuisine and then there's like fusion of different cuisines. So people tend to think that food in the United States has a bad reputation. But in fact, we have like really world-class scrumptious food that's multicultural. And a lot of times you don't even have to break the bank to go out for a meal. Break a bank. What a nice expression. Can you define mm -hmm. that? If something breaks the bank, it leaves you poor, leaves you penniless. <laughs> mm. You may say about an expensive food also, it costs an arm and a leg. Yeah. A meal out yeah. can cost an arm and a leg if you're not careful where you go. So this one I picked up actually when I visited the United Kingdom for the first time. I had the opportunity to go there with my mom when I think it was like 16 years old, maybe 15 or 16. And we went to visit my aunt who was living there. And we traveled all around England and British food also gets a bad rap, right? But their desserts are really good. And I used to be quite the sweet tooth when I was a teenager. So I, every time we went out for a lunch or a dinner, I wanted to try something local, some local treat. Like you have tea time there, you have these really nice scones and clotted cream, mm -hmm. which is like a, almost like a butter or something like that and jams and so on. So everywhere we'd go, I'd try a new one. And this one I discovered when we were in York, which is this really beautiful town in the north of England. I think I just ordered it because the name is so fun to say, sticky toffee pudding. Sticky toffee pudding. <laughs> <laughs> And when we went back to the United States, I was like, okay, I have to look this up so I can make it. And I would make it for any get together we would have. And it always was a hit. It always got rave reviews. Like everyone loved it. So in a nutshell, just to describe what it is. So it's called sticky toffee pudding. Do you guys know what a sponge cake is? Yeah. So the sponge, as I know now, is like a foundation for a cake. Is this like fluffy thing, which turns into a cake. It's supposed to absorb what you put on top of it. Yeah. You don't want just a sponge cake, like it needs toppings or it needs things because it otherwise it would be quite dry. But it's nice for this because just to describe to people what it is, it's basically a cake that you make with dates and there's a lot of mm -hmm. other things in it as well. And you top it with caramel sauce, with toffee sauce, which is similar to caramel. And then you also accompany it with cream. So this isn't at all, we do whipped cream in the States, but serving a dessert just with cream that's not whipped, that's not very typical and ice cream 
usually vanilla ice cream. Mm -hmm. So you have these things and it's nice that it's like that spongy texture because it absorbs all that cream and toffee sauce and ice cream. Mm -hmm. We'll have to show what dates is for those watching on YouTube, right? Yeah. Not so common sure. word. And so that's interesting, like having a cake with dates. Did anything else, you guys read this, did anything else stand out to you as being out of the ordinary? Not really. Yeah, now I now I regret saying that it was fancy because uh, <laughs> thinking of, I have most of the ingredients here. I could actually make it. So yeah, maybe I, maybe I can, can try it. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to say that we'll be sharing a PDF with you guys. We have like as a special present that will have all six recipes that we're going to talk about today. So if you want to cook any of them, you can do that. And then as an added bonus too, we're going to add all the vocabulary on there with definitions. So even if you aren't a cook, you don't want to cook them, but you want to learn these different words and so on, you'll find it all there. So you can click the link down in the description if you're on YouTube or in the show notes here on any other platform. Izzy and I will have to download it too to get that recipe. <laughs> <laughs> totally. There you go. For me, the weird thing with this recipe is that it has coffee, instant coffee in it. And you actually, you have to actually kind of like make the coffee and you mix this with the dates. You kind of blend everything together. So it absorbs that flavor. But that reminds of an Italian tiramisu. You also have instant coffee yeah. there, right? There you mm. go. But it's not typical in American desserts, I would say, in American cakes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I guess, I guess what's, what's more unique about it is the instant coffee. Yeah. And the tea. Like you actually, mm. when you put everything together, you leave the tea bags in there with the coffee. But the recipe I used to do, it didn't have the tea. So I think you could take it or leave it. You can leave it out if you don't have British tea regularly available or you just, I think you probably have enough with the coffee already there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you were to summarize your process for making it, what would that be? Summarize it, put on some good music and, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, th there's kind of like these different steps, but I would say, don't let it intimidate you because it's not so difficult. It's just kind of like you do the different things. And like, I think there's different moments you have to leave something. You can prepare something else. You can prepare the sauce apart while you, something else is sitting. And I used to do this while probably also doing like the dinner. So you could kind of do different steps at the same time while something else is baking. You do part of this and then, you know, you come back. So I think we can leave it at that. You guys can check out the PDF if you want to learn. There's a bunch of really great vocabulary here as well. And really, it's if you try it, it's going to blow your mind. It's like such a tasty dessert. So guys, I brought you a recipe, which is very easy one. It's very traditional in our family and in Ukraine as well. And um, some interesting fact before I shared the recipe. When you hear the word pancake, when I learned English at school, we would called this thing a pancake but then when i was watching american movies and everything i saw that okay actually pancakes are not those things because ethan i think you ate a lot of pancakes in our childhood with uh, maple jacks. syrup maybe <laughs> <laughs> so those are like smaller in size and a little bit fluffy yeah those are thick mm -hmm. pancakes and uh, people can also add banana there exactly to decrease the amount of sugar, just to use banana. I now do this thing also mm -hmm. when I prepare pancakes. My mom does that as well for my nephews. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. healthier. And it adds this extra flavor, banana flavor, which really goes uh, really well with um, cinnamon. The banana mm -hmm. with cinnamon, ah, it's a wonderful mixture. With that word, your British came out, flavor. Flavor. <laughs> yeah, I'm mixing <laughs> my American and British accent here. <laughs> So the funny fact with those pancakes, uh, sometimes they are the thin pancakes, which I'm going to be talking about today, are sometimes called crepes, or I saw the pronunciation is crepes, because mm -hmm. like it's coming from French. I think crepes is actually more correct, but mm -hmm. I would crepes. usually say crepes. Be careful with the vowel there, you don't want to say craps. You don't want to <laughs> say crap? No. We'll make you some craps <laughs> for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> what <Definitely>. a crap. <laughs> <laughs> There's some craps waiting for you. Yeah. There's some crap. <laughs> okay. So crepes or crepes and ca they can be sweet or savory. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Savory? Yeah. So savory is when it is not sweet, but salty. So the thing is, uh, again, we have in Ukrainian a word for pancakes or for crepes, which is mlinci, but when we add filling, it is called nalisniki. Uh, so it's a pancake with filling, but a thinner pancake. Oh, fun fact, another one about pancakes is that I learned that in Britain, they have pancake day, 
And this is like mm. a Throve Tuesday, which precedes the Ash Wednesday. So mm. they eat pancakes on this day. And mm. actually, in Ukraine, there is a tradition, but we have a whole week of Shrovetide. So before Lent, this is a pre-Lent period, the whole week we are supposed to prepare and to treat our relatives and friends and ourselves mm. with pancakes, with those thinner pancakes. Do you get sick of them? No. <laughs> and no, why do you know why not? Why we're not getting sick and tired of that? Because every day the feeling is different. Ah, nice. Yeah. So I'll be sharing one with the cottage cheese filling. Mm. So I saw this, Ksenia, and yeah. do you know in the States we have a very similar dish that's called blintzes? I don't know if you've heard of this. Ah. Maybe because it comes from Russian name for this food, because in Russian, blintzy would be blinny. So blintzy is like uh, so blintzy. Is it, it's a Russian food, blintzes. So I think it was inspired, like mm. American dish was inspired by Russian immigrants in America, I guess. Because it has a cheese filling and it might even be cottage cheese. And then usually you top it with berries or jam or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you might, so, have yeah. you ever tried this? Yes, I used to love them. I haven't had them in many years though. Okay, nice. So everybody, I guess, knows how to cook pancakes. So I won't go into so much detail there. And all the vocabulary you can check on that PDF we were mentioning. It's just like um, an important thing because when you prepare these thinner pancakes, it's important to swirl your pan so that mm. the batter spreads evenly on the surface. That makes them really thin. Okay, mm. So you have to master this thing. So mm -hmm. you take a ladle. You like uh, pour half of it, I guess, on the frying pan, and you have to make this swirling movement so it's to spreading. coat it, right? To coat the mm -hmm. surface of the, the pan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And it should be like baked from on both sides. So when, for example, the edges turn golden brown, you know that's the time for flipping. And yeah, when you are done with all the batter and all your pancakes are ready, then it's come for rolling them with the filling right and make those wraps i guess and it can be in a form of a roll when you do it like this mm -hmm. i think they're literally called rolls right yeah there's a called rolls i guess in english and the best thing is to serve it with sour cream i don't know if it's easy to find sour, oh, cream, sour cream in spain and brazil you can exchange it with uh, or change it with uh, mm -hmm. yogurt so that's funny because it's something that you also serve with my second recipe that I brought, which is a Mexican mm. dish. And they use a lot of sour cream, but it's not so common here. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I found that you can use almost the same as creme fraiche. Mm -hmm. What is creme fraiche? It's like yeah. a French variant of sour cream. Mm -hmm. It's more like yogurt. Like if you guys haven't tried it, it mm -hmm. probably yeah. tastes like yogurt. Maybe you could use plain yogurt. Yeah, plain yogurt would be fine. Maybe mm -hmm. find uh, the one with the higher percentage. Yeah. Uh, easy, but do you have sour cream in Brazil? Yeah, maybe it's not as easy to find. Like Ethan said, maybe in Barcelona, I don't know if it... You guys, there's that version, right? The the French version. Mm -hmm. But here, like normally you'd use yogurt. So we have like mm -hmm. a salad and that type of stuff. You have like the yogurt dressing. Okay. So I should say that all our Sundays, we have pancakes for our breakfast. Our Sunday breakfasts mm. are with these mm. types of pancakes. I want to try it. It sounds so yummy. But so far, we've had uh, dessert. Would you say like yours Ethan, is more like true dessert or is it something that it's, you can eat maybe in the afternoon with some tea? I think it's definitely a dessert. I don't think that it's yeah. what we might call like for your tea time or for afternoon coffee. You might have something that's not so sweet, right? Like a mm -hmm. muffin, for example. Or we even have something called coffee cake, which is like not a super sweet cake that you can accompany mm -hmm. with coffee. But... Yeah, I think the sticky toffee pudding, because it's got the caramel sauce and the cream and everything, it's definitely to finish off a meal and be like really, you know, satisfied. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Probably the, the kids lo love it. Yeah, of course. So the sugar, sugar high. Yeah. <laughs> Mine is quite sweet as well. Uh, mm -hmm. It's definitely can be eaten uh, for dessert, but very often you'll see people uh, actually having it for dinner. So mine is called cartola, which translate if you translate it from, from Portuguese, that's a top hat. <laughs> you know the top, top hat that uh like, yeah uh, the fancy okay. <laughs> it's not a super top fancy hat. dessert or uh, recipe though it's super easy to make and i think it even came from a more uh, humble has a more like humble origin uh here in my state of Pernambuco. 
here in Brazil. So the ingredients are few. Like uh, you have you need bananas, cheese, a specific type of cheese, like something that you can grill. You know, that's not gonna melt entirely if you set it on like a, a pan. And that's something very unique for Brazil. I don't even know if we have any cheese like that that doesn't melt so much. It's like curd <laughs> cheese, right? Solid curd cheese that you can slice. Yeah, I, I remember when we were in Brazil and you were grilling cheese. And I, I was wondering, oh, I, I wouldn't be able to find such. So here, I don't know if you can get it there, Ksenia, but we have something called halloumi cheese, which is from Cyprus. And mm -hmm. it's very similar to the queijo gualho that we had in Brazil that they, they mm -hmm. do on the grill. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if you would use exactly that cheese for this recipe. It looked like the one you're using here is thinner, easy. Uh, no, you can you can vary. There are so many types of cartola, and mm -hmm. it's actually meant to be something that you, you can use a cheese that you have at home. As long as you can, it's not going to totally melt. What would be your go-to cheese if you were making this at home? Well, my go-to is uh, mozzarella. Oh, you can do it with mozzarella. There's different kinds, right? <laughs> There's different types. The one that's like just melts probably is not a good idea, but... Um, there's uh, kinds of mozzarella mm -hmm. that they can hold some temperature mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and it's not going to be sitting there in a the frying pan for too long. You can uh, you can just like need to wait until like, it browns a little bit. I already want to try it. And it's not a huge <laughs> issue if it melts just a little bit either. So again, bananas, cheese, a thick slice, right? It's got to be thick and enough to cover the bananas. So you're going to, for example, in my recipe, you just need two bananas. You slice them in half like long ways, right? Yeah, there you go. Exactly. So then you'd have uh, four slices, like four halves. Mm -hmm. And so those are the halves that are going to first go into the pan with butter. And you want them to be just like a brown, you know, the, the bananas just like really brown. Like and caramelize and them, right? Caramelize them a little bit, but mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. their own sugar. Like you're not going to add sugar mm -hmm. at this point. So that's actually actually all you do to start. You just uh, throw some butter, like a spoon of butter in the, in the pan and then the bananas and then you flip them. And you have the bananas. And then in the same pan, you just put the, the cheese, the slice of cheese, which should be large enough to cover the entire surface of all the bananas, right? Because you're going to lay mm -hmm. the, the four halves like side by side. So you're going to have this square, almost like the size of your hand maybe, right? Mm -hmm. So you need a, a large slice of cheese there for, for that. And maybe this is something you want to split and eat with somebody else because it'll be mm. quite big for a single person. This is so uncommon here yeah. to fry bananas and fried cheese <laughs> <laughs> and fried cheese exactly <laughs> but now we melt cheese a lot so it sounds a little bit like you know familiar but mm -hmm. frying banana no we eat it like fruit just like apples pears you know you eat banana i try to actually deep fry bananas and it's super tasty like so yeah. delicious yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so i imagine it also has this sweetness and this caramel mm -hmm. and this has so few ingredients but it looks Totally decadent. You could even yeah. put it on top of a slice of toast or something, maybe to suck up some of the, the juices from the mm -hmm. banana. Exactly, because you have the juices from the banana, you have the, the butter. The better the butter, the better <laughs> for the taste, right? Like, uh, <laughs> use, use quality butter. And also, like, a finer ingredient there is a mix of sugar and uh, cinnamon, cinnamon powder, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cinnamon goes so well with banana. Yeah, this yeah. mix. Yeah. It almost sounds like banana French toast but with cheese instead of toast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a popular mix, right? A mixture of like sugar and cinnamon powder. You mm -hmm. guys have that. We right? even call that cinnamon sugar. There you go. It's so, a really yeah, cinnamon sugar. fancy name. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but, but by the way, you just reminded me if I can very, very quickly go on a tangent with this sugar or, or pure extract. So guys, has it ever happened to you to mix between vanilla extract and vanilla sugar? To mix the two of them together. No, I mean, like to confuse between them. So at home, I had like two packs and one of like pure vanilla, vanilla extract, and another was vanilla sugar. And once I mixed them up and I just totally spoiled my dessert because it oh. became bitter. You know, when you add too much vanilla, like yeah. pure vanilla extract, it like tastes really bitter. But there are like those special packages, you know, with like vanilla and mixed with sugar. It, you know, you can add the whole pack into your dish yeah. so it once happened to me i remember now <laughs> i learned that the hard way when i was young because i thought of vanilla as like vanilla ice cream or vanilla that you have with desserts and i remember <laughs> finding when i was little a bottle of vanilla extract in our pantry in the place where mm -hmm. you keep some food and, and like drinking like a swig of it 
and just being <laughs> oh like, oh, poor like, kid. That doesn't taste like vanilla. <laughs> well, it does taste like vanilla, but it's just like not sweet at all, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, the sugar, the, the cinnamon sugar. So that's the final mm-hmm. ingredient, and you're just going to mm-hmm. pour some of that uh, on top of your dish there, which is going to be, oh, you're going to lay the cheese on top of the bananas. That's how you finish it. And if there's some butter, melted butter in the pan still, you just like a, also drizzle some of that mm-hmm. on top of it. So is it like a sandwich? Like you have cheese, banana, and cheese, right? So you have banana inside both cheeses? No, no? The, the first layer is the bananas. Actually, some oh, people okay. even pour uh, the cinnamon sugar first on the plate, and mm-hmm. then the, the bananas on top of it, and then the cheese, mm-hmm. and then cinnamon sugar to finish it, to kind of coat nice. it. Uh, that sounds so tasty. Yeah. You could even maybe do that like inside of a pão de queijo, like a Brazilian cheese bread, to have like the, the double cheese. The extra cheese. Many ways. Actually, <laughs> yeah. Like now that, because you said uh, toast, right? You could maybe mm-hmm. try it with the toast, but ice cream is another interesting combination. Oh, yeah. That would yeah. make a lot of sense. And you have like then that, I love those that are like the hot and cold. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When would you usually eat this? Is it, It's a dessert or it's breakfast? It's a, it's a dessert. Well, mm-hmm. it can be for any time of the day. Like a really... I've eaten it in the morning, but uh, probably like if I'm traveling or something and I'm feeling like having a really heavy breakfast, Mm -hmm. but um, it is sugary, quite sugary and dense. I just wanted to ask, is it something only homemade or you can actually buy it somewhere? Mm -hmm. No, most restaurants have it here as Mm. an option for dessert Mm. or dinner. But specifically from Mm. Pernambuco. I don't don't think I've seen it before. I'd say so. It's uh, people from my state are kind of proud about our food so mm-hmm. we we make everything like a world heritage something I don't <laughs> call right now but they say they say that so there's like multiple recipes there's also the mm-hmm. bolo de holo. look mm-hmm. it up and that's another one that is this is like protected the recipe is protected by the un or something because it's like world, her- heritage, world heritage food yeah mm. i think you you could take a maybe one of the ukrainian crepes and Put a cartola inside of it and roll it up. Probably be pretty yeah, tasty. Yeah, would be so <laughs> tasty. Would be <laughs> so That's a tasty. thought now. Nice. So we have our last three recipes, which maybe we can just hint at, but those are just going to be in the PDF because we don't have time to go over all of them today. And of course, if you guys enjoyed this, let us know in the comments. We could do another episode like this, sharing more recipes. I think all of us either like to cook or cook for sustenance in Ksenia's case. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, like I, you know, remember I said, like I... I hate cooking, but I like eating. <laughs> exactly. That's it. So my second recipe, which would have been good. All the things we shared were sweet, right? Or at least like a bit sweet. Mm-hmm. So this might have been good to share with. And I think, Ksenia, you also had something that's savory. Yeah. But mine, as I said, was Mexican. So I chose enchiladas. Enchiladas usually are like the the crepes that you share, Ksenia. Like usually it's something that you roll up. But the recipe that I'm sharing in the PDF is one that my mom taught me. And the way she does it is to make it less tedious to make without mm-hmm. all the rolling is you do it more like a casserole, which is where you have like a tray and you do layers of something. So Mm -hmm. it's almost like a lasagna. You do Mexican tortillas and then you do the filling. You can do different fillings. The recipe I'm sharing has chicken and vegetables, but you could do also if you're vegetarian, just with vegetables and cheese or if you prefer beef or whatever. And then you need the enchilada sauce, which you can buy if you can find it where you live or you can just make it. And then tortillas on top and you melt cheese and it goes in the oven. It's really nice dinner so that's one thing that i make quite often here when we have people over for dinner and of course serving it with guacamole and sour cream since i talked Uh, about sour cream earlier usually those dressings those servings they change the food yeah they Mm. add that kick (laughs) my favorite part of mexican food it's like the salsa sauce right which is actually salsa stands for sauce right Mm -hmm. i guess so i guess salsa in, in spanish means sauce yeah Usually you say here like Mexican salsa. Just like that tomato sauce, like really rich. Mm. You have a lot of different types of Mexican salsas too. Yeah, but that's a typical one like pico de gallo. Mm -hmm. Probably my my favorite part of Mexican food. So Ksenia, I believe you're... So we had a dish from Mexico, from the UK, from Brazil, from Ukraine. So I believe you're thinking of South a bit from Ukraine. Yeah, so I brought another recipe. So guys, as I already mentioned, I don't really like cooking. That's why I try to 
uh, go simple and search for really simple um, recipes. And this one is my go-to recipe when I don't have anything to eat and I have to feed my family with a healthy uh, dinner or lunch. So, and this recipe I learned from my mother-in-law, my Turkish mother-in-law. So this is a traditional <laughs> Turkish soup and it is called uh, mercimek çorbası in Turkish. And this is a lentil soup. Lentil is a type of legume. Uh, you have those chickpea and green peas, right? Beans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beans. So, although, but that looks so beautiful and it adds such a creamy texture to this soup. Oh. So, if you're a vegetarian, you can cook it just with water. So, lentils and water. Or vegetable uh, broth. Yeah, vegetable broth. But if you want to make it like more... Hardy? Hearty, yeah, that's the word, like to mm -hmm. fill you, like really fill you. Then you can use like chicken broth. Uh, basically, the main secret, guys, you will learn the recipe in the PDF, right? But the main secret is, uh, again, serving to really make it taste Turkish. As soon as you prepare the soup, you should serve it with wedges of lemon mm -hmm. and those pepper flakes, you know, a lap of pepper flakes. Uh, so you should squeeze lemon into your soup and add those pep red pepper. That really makes a difference. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it's really plain if you just cook lentils. It has mm -hmm. rich flavor, but it's, it doesn't stand out. But this, you know, this lemon juice with pepper really makes it special. I really like yeah. it. My mouth is watering now, Ksenia. This is, <laughs> it's really funny to you share this because it's a dish that I grew up with. Really? My grandmother was Lebanese and... I don't know how that we used to go uh, when we would visit Detroit, where my mom's family is from, and she still has some family members. We would go to a Turkish store, and we tried there this type of soup. And mm. I believe my my aunt was like very good at like being flirtatious and like getting getting recipes <laughs> from places that had things we really like. Mm -hmm. She got their Turkish soup recipe, and so I also grew up with this. And the lemon thing is what yeah. is just mind blowing. Yeah, yeah. All right, Izzy, what's your last recipe? This is similar to what Xenia shared, but um, I think I have my own take on pancakes because this is a recipe of mine. So we covered uh, Brazilian cuisine, right? We covered Mexican, what else? Ukrainian. British. Turkish, British. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so those, right? We didn't repeat. And now we're going to get into, I guess, Izzyan. The world of easy <laughs> cuisine because uh, this is a recipe of my own. So I actually adapted something that I have here in Brazil called crepioca. I used to make this all the time when I lived in Belo Horizonte. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take much time and it's like pretty healthy breakfast. Mm -hmm. And you, you need, a, need an ingredient that is um, tapioca flour, right? That's what I brought to Ukraine because I knew I wouldn't find it here. <laughs> but I brought it from Brazil. Ethan mentioned that, like that, it, it is. It can be pretty difficult to find. I think in other countries. I looked up. I guess in the United States, mm -hmm. uh, it's like everywhere. But in Europe, mm -hmm. maybe it's not as popular, right? I found it on mm -hmm. Amazon. It's probably mm -hmm. quite a bit more expensive than in Brazil, but it's still not that expensive if you have a hankering or you want to try it. Uh, you you'll need that ingredient. If you have that ingredient, tapioca flour, I, I bet that you'll have everything else uh, on the list. It is starchy, right? Like the tapioca, can you define for people what it is, maybe? Well, originally the ingredient is a type of flour, not not the not flour like a rose flour, like is like a wheat flour that used to make bread <laughs> cake, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's white and it really feels like uh, cornstarch, right? Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. the way it looks. It's really simple. As Ethan said, it's super easy to make and I will share the recipe in a, in a PDF. But the filling is actually what's what's my contribution here to this amazing <laughs> dish oh actually oh no there's something else like in the batter they need to mix which is again banana you know mm -hmm. i think brazil is also famous for uh bananas it's really you're have a so fan many of banana of mm -hmm. yeah it's so easy like it's the uh, nature's snack right mm -hmm. snack bar <laughs> you peel it eat it so you, you just kind of mash a banana a single banana and mix it in the the batter the liquidy thing that you use for making the, the pancake and you'll see that the recipe is super simple but the filling is gorgonzola blue cheese oh. and uh mm. ricotta that sounds so good you mix that because the ricotta is going to make the gorgonzola totally like 
something that you're not going to get sick of eating because it is salty. Mm-hmm. You're quite salty yeah. with risola. But with the ricotta, if it's not salty ricotta, it's going to be something that you can eat like a ton of, going to be able mm-hmm. to eat so much of it. And with the banana batter, it is just like the, the perfect combination. It's not super sweet. It's just like a, enough for making it incredibly balanced and something that you mm-hmm. can eat. Mm-hmm. I love like that touch of blue cheese is like gorgonzola on different Mm -hmm. recipes because it's like if you just have like a little bit, it gives it a really unique flavor, right? A nice richness. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I used to do a lot to the like Romeo and Juliet crepioca (laughs) that had goyabada Mm -hmm. and and then cheese, like queijo minero, and that's really nice as well. Ah, yeah. So let's jump now into our game for today, which is Celebrity Impressions. Basically, I'm going to send each of you, we'll take turns, a sentence. It's a silly, zany sentence. And you'll have a celebrity that you need to imitate saying that silly sentence. And Mate has been kind enough, our producer here in the studio, to grab a couple too for me. So I don't know what sentences or what celebrities I'm going to have to imitate. So we're all here in the same boat. Okay. Ethan, can you explain what does say- zany mean? Zany means kind of crazy. It's similar to silly. Yeah, okay. there's an emoji, right? Like I think it's a zany emoji. It's like the tongue is like the eye, eye or something, right? Hi, <laughs> that looks like a yeah. emoji. It's a zany emoji. <laughs> okay. All right. So, Ksenia, do you want to do the honors? Okay. You will be guessing, right? I'll so try. This is her. Like, oh my god, this podcast is so fat. You guys are like the best audience ever. Uh, probably American. <laughs> Maybe, but yeah, it is American. difficult. It's feisty. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if Who it was that? anywhere near her, but <laughs> yeah, let me try again. Like, oh my god, this podcast is so fat. You guys are like the best audience. <laughs> no, it's nice. Like, uh, you, you gave me two, like, the simple size got bigger. Take a wild guess. Uh, I was gonna say, not Oprah, but no, but another uh, famous yeah. um, host. Ah, Ellen. Ellen. Ah, that was my first, yeah. actually. Yeah, I was going to say Ellen, but I was like, no. Nah. <laughs> All right, Izzy, I'm going to send it to you now. You ready? Ready. I pull my heart and soul into this song, even though the lyrics are basically just me complaining about airline food. So someone's That's coming from Britain. <laughs> Maybe it's Adele. <laughs> you got yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the, the Cockney accent. The Cockney accent. You'd have, mm-hmm. uh, is it the glottal tea? The glottal tea, yeah. Oh, there might yeah. not be there any. Heart, heart and soul, right? So hot, hot and soul. Hot mm-hmm, and soul. Mm-hmm. About. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what yeah. I remember. She doesn't pronounce the T's, the hour. She... Yeah, because like in yeah. American English with connected speech, you'd have something like mm-hmm. heart and soul. It's like heart mm-hmm. and soul. Yeah. And go to British Cockney accent, you have hot and and because you, the sentence was ending with food, I remembered this uh, video. We made a lesson on this, oh, where it's right. super hard to recognize the accent, <laughs> like what she's saying, because she's, <laughs> she has very thick accent there. Okay, well, on the plate, we've got two fried eggs. We've got, what's that? It was, before I ate it, two bits of bacon, two grilled tomatoes, three black pudding. You lot are mean for giving me that. Yeah. yeah. The first That's time weird. I ever heard her, I was shocked because she has such beautiful lyrics and she sings so beautifully. And then she has Cockney's not known for being the most posh or the most eloquent sounding of British accents, let's say. Or elegant, right? It's like, uh, and her <laughs> lyrics are quite, can be quite elegant. Nice. Mm-hmm. Your turn, Ethan. My pith beef, when people leave their shoelaces untied, it's a knockout for fashion sense. Okay, so can we, can we do this together? Like Sandy and I just like have a... Conversation. Yeah, uh, both right. of you are in the dark here, right? Yeah. Yeah. This, this guy has a lisp, right? Xenia? Mm-hmm. He has a lisp. Yeah. <laughs> maybe since Xenia and I did it twice, maybe you could do it again. My pet peeve when people leave their shoelaces untied, it's a knockout for fathom sense. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> okay. I, I got Mike Tyson, is probably the end, if not Mike that's Tyson. It. Uh, that's it. Uh, right? I was going to say Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger because the second time it sounded really <laughs> German. <laughs> <laughs> he has sort of like um, a cutting way of speaking, Mike Tyson. So, Ksenia, here comes your second one. <laughs> mm, really? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to try. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Oh my God, is that a podcast microphone? I can't believe I'm getting interviewed by a microphone. This is literally the highlight of my life. <laughs> okay, now it's got to be Arnold. <laughs> yeah, that's him. There you go. <laughs> Nailed it. That's him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> Thanks. All right, I think it's my turn now. I can't believe you wore this outfit. Could it clash anymore with my existential dread? Mm-hmm. I feel like you've listened to this person a lot in your English learning, Ksenia. <laughs> <laughs> I've listened a lot in my English learning. There's a there's like a, a line there that's yeah that gives it away. Yeah, but I thought about it, but that would be like too easy it, because that line but could it be any more like like that? that? So it yeah, of could, course it rings a bell. Could you like be any closer? Matthew, yeah, <laughs> could you be any closer? It like rings a bell. It's like from <laughs> Matthew Perry. <laughs> Yeah, from Chandler, Chandler. from France. Chandler. Chandler from France. Yeah. Of course, I totally, like, I, I heard this and I thought, oh, it's just like Chandler from France, but it would be, like, too easy. <laughs> Ethan. Okay, I'm not watching anything, so I'm just doing this from memory. He who must not be named is totally afraid of spiders, especially the fuzzy ones. Maybe it's like, hello, how, what's the name of the actor who played Harry Potter? <laughs> It's that. Yeah. Uh, it's Daniel, Daniel Radcliffe. Uh, Daniel yeah. Radcliffe. It's him, right? Yeah. And, and I was going to say, like, uh, is Ron actually the he who must not be named? Because he's the one <laughs> yeah. that made of spiders, right? <laughs> I think that's the, that's the joke there. All right, guys. So don't forget to download that PDF in the description so you can get all these recipes. Even if you're not a cook, then go and learn all the different vocabulary. There's a ton more than what you picked up here. And that's absolutely free to download. So you can get that right now by clicking the link in the description. And of course, also check out the Real Life English app if you are not already listening to this there, or even if you are, we have just recently added some fantastic new features that you guys have been asking for. So, And finally, if you are enjoying this podcast, you can really help us out a lot for free by, if you're on YouTube, subscribing, giving this video a like, really helps us to be discovered by more people who want to improve their English. And if you are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or another platform like this, then leave us a five-star review there. All this, again, it helps us to keep making great content like this for you guys. And remember that no matter what divides us, that which unites us, like great food, (laughs) is far greater. So one, two, three. Uh, Oh, yeah. yeah. So dear global citizens, today we are going to be doing something a little bit different. You will be learning with a learner just like you, but who has achieved an incredible native-like level in English. So my guest today is our content manager here at Real Life English, Izzy Mignot. We're trying to help people understand each other, literally and figuratively. What's the whole story? So maybe we could just start from the beginning. How did you get started learning English? 